She's inside with a lawyer. I'll be here, but I don't think you'll need me. I'm Peter Rutherford, Mrs. Nolan's lawyer. Catherine Chandler. Mrs. Nolan. You understand the DA's office is considering a grant of immunity for you to testify against your husband. Before I decide whether to recommend that course, I'll need to ask you a few questions. My client doesn't want to answer any questions until she has immunity. She doesn't want to incriminate herself. Mr. Rendler, I already have your client's latest statements to the police. I'm only asking her to illuminate some points which are likely to be raised in court. Uh, there are very sensitive issues with Mrs. Nolan. It was so quiet. That's how I knew it was bad. Usually there was screaming or yelling. Mrs. Nolan, in what condition was Jonathan when you found him? No. No. I'm sorry, Mrs. Nolan. But we're preparing a case for your husband's grand jury hearing. We need to know what your testimony will be. Mrs. Nolan, I understand that I... It's... I don't think I can stand it. Talking about it. I know. But we have to get these details clear in your mind. Tomorrow, your husband's attorneys will do everything they can to make you contradict yourself. Do I have to go up there? There's no other way. I'm afraid not. Their best defense is to make you appear guilty. Make me appear guilty. What if I am guilty? You're just like everybody else. You think I should be up on the stand there with him? No. No, of course not. I should just get used to it. Nobody will ever understand. Molly. I want to understand. You know how he did it? He told me he loved me. When he hit me, he used to tell me that it was for my own good. And he did it because he loved me. Just to hear him say it was worth the pain. So I let him. And it kept getting worse. And I just kept letting him. You never fought back. I couldn't. You never thought you deserved better. No. <laughs> you do, Molly. Oh, I don't think so. You didn't hurt him. You never touched him. I didn't help him. I didn't help him. You were afraid for your life. Everyone knows that. Do they? They will. I promise. Molly, make your husband pay for what he did. You can do that tomorrow when you speak in court. Let's get back to what happened when the police... Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Mrs. Nolan. 
When you and your husband were first taken into custody, you told the police that your husband had been away from the apartment when your son sustained injuries in a fall. Was this true? Mrs. Nolan, I have to ask you to speak up. What is your answer? No. <clears throat> no. Why would you lie to the police like this, Molly? I'd already lost my son, Jonathan, and I was afraid of losing Richard, too. You loved your husband, and you wanted to protect him. Yes. Was there another reason? Yes. And what was that? He told me that... He told you what, Molly? He told me... that... <laughs> Molly, you said that the first story was a lie. But later you went on to tell the truth. You did the right thing. Tell us the truth now. I can't. Did your husband hit Jonathan that night? Did he? Your Honor, she's harassing her own witness. Mr. Nolan, you intend to answer the question? I can't. I can't. Well, if you don't answer the question, then I'll have to ask you to step down. Answer the question, Molly. Answer for Jonathan. I'm sorry. The witness will have to step down. Your Honor, her testimony must be disallowed. I can't cross-examine her. She can't speak. She can speak. She won't speak for the same reason she kept quiet the night her son was killed because she is scared to death of him. 